A word of warning. If you're easily offended by cannibalism, death, torture, and fascinating facts about the human body, this series may not be for you. Therefore, listener discretion is advised. Cannibalism. Could you eat a whole human being? With the help of a doctor, a scientist, and a chef, I set out to see if it's possible. Cannibalism, part 22, a disorder. A thigh, a heart, or an eye are easy pickings for a cannibal. But do true cannibals have a disorder, which means they'll eat anything, no matter how disgusting or complicated? And wannabe cannibals don't. Body parts are symbolically unique for different cannibals, based on what they're lacking in their lives. From 1988 to 89, Tsutomi Miyazaki, the Japanese little girl killer, murdered and mutilated four girls aged four to seven. As a paedophilic necrophile, he raped their corpses, drank their blood, and ate their hands. As being born premature with a birth defect, he envied theirs, as his were deformed and claw-like. For less imaginative cannibals, a thigh is an obvious choice as a food, whereas hands are complex. They contain 27 bones, a quarter of those in the human body, 27 joints, 3 main nerves, 5 main blood vessels, 100 plus ligaments, tendons and 30 muscles. The biggest being the dorsal interosseus, at just 0.5 millimetres thick, which for a cannibal is hardly a snack. Like feet, with 26 bones, 33 joints and 29 muscles, many of which, being thin, lack much calorific value. So in extreme cases, like the Kazakh famine from 1930 to 33, eyewitnesses recalled a foot or a hand of a child boiling in the cauldron over a fire, as loved ones were forced to make soup from their dead. But often with cannibals, who, unlike other killers, have taken their depravity to a greater extreme, what parts they covet play a large part in their psychological trauma and logic. Having stabbed her abusive husband to death, Omeima Nelson cooked his head, hands, and castrated him in revenge for his alleged sexual assaults. Conversely, not being a cannibal, serial killer Jerry Brudos, the lust killer, severed and froze the feet of three females to assuage his fetish and he dressed those dismembered feet in high heel shoes as he masturbated. Cannibals don't eat to say to hunger, as guided by emotions like anger or lust. Some eat feces, eyes, intestines, even penises, with Jeffrey Dahmer sexually driven to dine on the thighs and biceps of athletic young men. No one really knows why people turn to cannibalism. Maybe it's a remnant of our Paleolithic past, that it's linked to nutritional deficiency, as is common amongst many mammals of which humans are, that it's fueled by cultural taboos which prevent us from feeding the world in a population crisis, that it symbolizes love, as has been done across many centuries in art and literature, that it's ceremonial, sacrificial, a psychiatric disorder fueled by trauma, or that it's a psychosexual paraphilia, like varorophilia. Paraphilia, the intense sexual arousal sparked by the atypical, isn't common. It can begin with harmless objects, like armpits, mannequins, feathers or fur, and extend all the way up to the more extreme, like strangulation, amputation, feces or varorophilia. This is the erotic desire to be consumed by or to consume another human being's flesh. And taken to a further stage, anthropomorpholagnia, which is the raping and cannibalizing of another person. As individuals, we all have our own idiosyncrasies. We have odd behaviors or harmless fantasies which border on paraphilia. And in moments of stress or arousal, especially in sexual situations, they appear, whether dressing up, whispering, 
role-playing, mild pain, voyeurism, sensual feeding, or submission. Cannibals are merely those who have taken their paraphilia beyond what is acceptable, morally and or legally, to society, and in some cases even to themselves, as even the most disturbed have boundaries. Some have also suggested it could be a psychopathic variation of Picker, an eating disorder resulting from a psychiatric disturbance. Sufferers are known to eat mildly toxic items like soap, plaster or paint. More destructive items like pins, glass or metals. The disturbing like vomit, urine. And in one case, a woman called Keisha ate soiled nappies, describing them as having a sour, candy-like flavor. But are these real obsessions? An odd nutritional hunger? Or merely a psychiatric cry for help? 2009 to 2010, Bradford. Stephen Griffiths, the self-styled crossbow cannibal, murdered three sex workers, Shelley Armitage, Susan Rushworth, and Suzanne Blamires, and back at his council-owned flat at Soho Mills. He dismembered, and supposedly he told detectives he cooked the flesh from the first two victims and then ate a third one raw. And although the murders were proven, None of the cannibalism was. Described as an insignificant loner, with a warped sense of morals and an obsession with true crime, it's unlikely that Griffiths was a cannibal in the true sense of the word, or that he had a paraphilia which drove him to eat a woman's flesh. Guided by a lack of love in his life and a sad desperate need to be revered, having bragged about his crimes to the police, which were regurgitated by a salivating tabloid press. He felt it would take that level of depravity to join the pantheon of serial killers. Which explains why, having murdered his last victim in the flat's communal hallway, he waited to be caught, positioned the evidence, and raised a toast to the CCTV camera which had captured his crime. He wasn't a cannibal. He was just a sad little man who was desperate for the attention his life lacked. Join me tomorrow to explore the sexual and reproductive organs. Uh.